Hello. My name is Lubna Abdetaweb Youssef, and I am giving you today our third lecture. Let me remind you that this is a writing course, but I believe that we cannot write well without reading. Now, as you can see on the screen, our talk today is about the Egyptian Knowledge Bank. Now, when we use a term, we have to define the term. So, although we are going to discuss the definition of the term during the lecture at length, let me tell you that when we have a term like Egyptian knowledge bank, the term is made up of three words. We start by defining the last word, which is the noun. So it is a bank. Now, is it a bank where we deposit money? No, this is a bank where there is knowledge. Now, what nationality is this bank? This is a bank in Egypt. So it's an Egyptian knowledge bank. And it is very famous today as the EKB. E for Egypt, K for knowledge, B for bank. Now, let me go to the second slide, which introduces the table of contents. As I told you, we start by reading. So we're going to read a short passage that introduces the launch of the Egyptian Knowledge Bank. What does launch mean? It means the first start of this bank. Now, Launch in Arabic means al intilaqa Intilaqat Bank al marifa al-Misri. And the title of the passage is It's the World's Biggest Digital Library. So the Egyptian Knowledge Bank is a library, a digital library. Okay, so I have the website so that you can go to the website and read some more. Now, we said before that reading and writing are interrelated. We read in order to gain information and to find out what other writers have said about a certain issue. And then we can write about it to introduce our own point of view. Now, in this lecture, we are going to discuss critical thinking questions. So, the definition of critical thinking questions is these are questions that you're supposed to answer, but they're not simply comprehension questions. They're not simply questions that ask whether you understand or not, because you are adults, you are grown-ups, and of course you understand what a library is. But these questions will encourage you to think about this library in depth and critically. Now, the questions that I have in this lecture are six questions, and these are questions that came to students before you in a previous exam. 
So I am going to introduce you to some of the answers of students. And also I read this with students in class at the Blended Learning University. And some of them gave me wonderful answers that I also include it. We're going to see which question inspired the students most. Now, I introduce you to many answers to show you that any question can be answered in more ways than one, and the answers can all be correct. Of course, when I say all, all the ones that I have chosen here, it doesn't mean that any question will be answered in a correct way all the time. No, but many questions can involve more than one correct answer. And now we're going to move on to the passage first and then to the questions and the answers. Now, the passage says, in an effort to boost, the word boost means to improve, to develop, to advance, in an effort to boost access, to quality research and educational materials, the Egyptian government has launched the Egyptian Knowledge Bank, the EKB, on Saturday, the 9th of January, 2016. An online library containing material from some of the most prominent international publishing houses, such as National Geographic, Cambridge, Oxford, Reuters, and Britannica. Now, before I read the second paragraph, I want to point out something important. There is information between square brackets, like improve and advance. 9th January 2016. What is the meaning of using a square bracket? A square bracket means that this information was not included in the original passage, and I, as a writer, and a reader have included this information to make the idea clearer to you students as readers. All right, so in an effort to boost access to quality research and educational materials is the original sentence. I added improve and advance to help you in understanding the word boost. Now, um, the Egyptian government has launched the Egyptian Knowledge Bank on Saturday. Now, the passage did not include the detail, 9th January 2016, but because this piece of information was, um, and this passage was written in 2016, I wanted to highlight this piece of information to you because in 2020, of course, we do not know when this uh, <clears throat> bank was launched. So this is why I added this information. On its first day live, the Knowledge Bank received over 1.8 million online visitors. Now, of course, this tells you how important this knowledge bank is. And the fact that the Egyptians understood the importance of this bank, so 
million, that means almost two million people visited the site on the first day it was introduced on the internet. And who gave us this piece of information? The Cairo Post. After having been launched, after having been started by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi himself. So, the President of Egypt, is the person who launched this bank, and we're going to discuss why this is the case. Conceived as an online knowledge and information hub, now you know the word between square brackets is my introduction, and the hub is a center with free access to books, journals, audio, video, or image libraries, and software from around the world. The Beta website is available in English and Arabic, although the official launch will be on January 23rd, according to EKB's Facebook page. Now, how much money did Egypt pay to the publishers, the international publishers mentioned above, the National Geographic, the Cambridge, Oxford, Reuters, and Britannica, in order to allow Egypt to officially use these sources on this bank? I would like you to know that Egypt paid a lot of money but this is money that is extremely well used because this will benefit research in Egypt and knowledge and education in Egypt at large. Back to the slide, any person with an Egyptian IP, an internet protocol address, will be granted free access to the website. So the website is free for Egyptians. And now we move to the slide with the questions. We have six questions. In your own words, explain what is the Egyptian Knowledge Bank. Now, why do I say in your own words? because I want you to learn to express yourself in simple English, in your own words, without copying the words of someone else. Now, I said this in, this, in the lectures before, that if you copy the words of someone else without telling your reader that these words are not yours, what you are doing is serious. You are stealing the words of someone else. You are plagiarizing. This is Sariqa Almeya. We in the Almeya and we لما نعرف إنه موضوع النزاهة الأكاديمية ده موضوع مهم نتعلمه ونطبقه ونستخدمه ونعلمه لولادنا وجيراننا وأصحابنا علشان المصريين عندهم أخلاق ومش بيسرقوا شغل بعض. The second question is why would President Sisi himself introduce this library. Now, this question inspired a lot of wonderful answers, and we're going to discuss them together. What is the difference between the Egyptian knowledge bank and a regular bank? Now, here we are comparing and contrasting. Why is a library important? Because 
an effect. We have a library. What effect will this library have on the Egyptian people? Now, this is not a regular library. This is a digital library. So how will this new digital library improve research in Egypt? Again, cause and effect. And then when we say this is a not a regular library, this is not a bank, this is a digital library, we are introducing a classification. We're classifying libraries into libraries that are physical, that you go to, and libraries that are digital, which you find on the internet. And the last question is, how will this research that you read on the library, on the site of the library, how will this research help us to improve the research in Egypt and therefore help us to improve the lives of the Egyptians? Of course, this means that this is a cause, all right, the library and the research in the library and the training to read this research will lead to the improvement of the life of the Egyptians in every field. So cause and effect. Now let's move to the definition of the um, Egyptian Knowledge Bank. And this is the first question. In your own words, explain what is the Egyptian Knowledge Bank. Now, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different explanations. Any of these explanations would be correct. The Egyptian Knowledge Bank is a knowledge information center that anyone can access for free. Now, anyone here does not mean anyone in the world. It means anyone in Egypt. The second answer, the Egyptian Knowledge Bank is an advanced online library where one can access quality research and educational material on various topics and in different fields of knowledge. All right, now this answer provides more details. The users of this website can download books, articles, audio and video material for free. Now, this sentence is from the passage above. So what are we going to do? We're going to use quotation marks, all right? Because if we don't use quotation marks, this sentence will be plagiarized. So here I added quotation marks. The Egyptian Knowledge Bank is an electronic library that has resources from well-known publishers all over the world. Now, here we can add more information, all right? So we add a, col a colon and we say from Cambridge, Cambridge, Oxford, all right, etc. Okay, so another possible answer is the Egyptian Knowledge Bank is an online library that can be accessible from any computer as at the user's home or at work. So it is an online library and it is accessible on the internet. Now, another possible answer is the Egyptian Knowledge Bank is a site that makes important sources available to researchers and 
readers? And the last possible answer is the Egyptian Knowledge Bank provides Egyptian researchers with local and international sources that can be accessed from home, from the class, from the office, or from any academic institution. Now, this is question number one. Now, question number two, why would President El Sisi himself introduce this library? Now, this is the first slide, this is the second slide, and this is the third slide to tell you that there are four slides that introduce the different answers um, of the different students about this question. Now, of course, we don't need to read them all in the lecture because you can all read them at your own pace in order to understand them and in order to compare them so that you decide which from your point of view is the better answer. And you can be inspired by some of these answers in order to write your own answer. Of course, after you log in, and you join the Egyptian Knowledge Bank and you make use of some of the material um, in this bank. Now, President El Sisi himself launched this EKB because he wants to spread knowledge and he wants to convey the message that education and research are important for the future of Egypt. Now, during the coronavirus pandemic, the problem, we started understanding the importance of finding the correct information, finding the knowledge that will help us go to the right place in order to have the test done, in order to find a way to um, uh, cure ourselves if we need cure. And this is why research and knowledge that is made available on the internet is extremely important. Let's look at another answer. Now, Pres President Sisi himself launched this EKB because he knows that one of the tools to develop the system of education is through the use of advanced methods of the acquisition of knowledge. Now, in order to acquire knowledge, in the past, we only had books to read or journals, but now there is a lot of material on the internet and the material is visual and interactive. And here, for example, today, we are using the internet to have a lecture instead of having a lecture physically because we cannot go out and we all are supposed to stay at home. Now, another answer is, President Sisi is both directly and indirectly declaring that the president of Egypt is interested in knowledge, education, and research. And of course, this is a very important declaration to make the people aware, aware of the value of knowledge. Now, the following slide introduces more answers, all right? Um, he is aware that learners use the internet and that such an online library will assist them in developing their knowledge and in conducting research, all right? That's 
one of the possible answers. Now, on the following slide, um, he um, shows through this that many Egyptians are using the internet now and the library online is accessible to a large audience. What he did is useful and appreciated because on the first day, um, what he did is useful and appreciated because in, on its first day, the library received 1.8 million visitors, which is really a big number. Now, I want to um, use quotation marks here. I am showing you how to use quotation marks. The library received, received 1.8 million visitors, all right? And so um, if we do not use quotation marks, we will regard it, be regarded as plagiarists. And of course, this is not a good idea. Now, um, another answer, he wants to offer the Egyptians information um, about um, any field of knowledge that they are interested in because um, the researchers in medicine, in engineering, in history, in geography, need to read what others have produced in order to develop what others have produced and in order to produce knowledge. So by conducting research, through reading previous research, the Egyptians will contribute to the production of knowledge. Now, this is a slide that I will leave for you to read on your own, but it more or less introduces some of the ideas we discussed before. Now, what is the difference between the Egyptian knowledge bank and a regular bank? Now, here we have comparison and contrast. Now, the Egyptian knowledge bank enriches the minds of the Egyptians, but a regular bank enriches the pockets of those who have money in their accounts. Of course, this is a metaphor and it introduces humor. It introduces an element of humor. Now, a bank is a place to deposit money and to make sure it is safe. Now, what is an Egyptian knowledge bank? Using the title Egyptian knowledge bank for this online library is to indicate that it contains reliable material for research and the material is also rich. It is even more valuable than money. The Egyptian Knowledge Bank is a virtual library that offers resources for research, but the bank offers services that have to do with money. The library enriches the mind, whereas the bank enriches the pockets. Another possible answer is both the Egyptian Knowledge Bank and the bank are similar in that they have treasures. All right, that's the similarity. The difference is the Egyptian Knowledge Bank, however, is an electronic library that has valuable resources that render it as important as a bank that has money and jewelry, okay? Jewelry is missing a Y, okay? Now, regular banks deal with money and business but the Egyptian Knowledge Bank makes knowledge available for researchers in all fields. Regular banks are for everyone, but this website is for readers who would like to develop as human beings. Now, let's move on to slide number five. Here's sl uh, slide number 11, I'm sorry. And slide number 11 introduces more differences between the Egyptian Knowledge Bank and the regular bank, and you can read these 
at leisure. Now, question number four, why is a library important? A library is important because it makes resources readily available, not only in a physical space like the Library of Alexandria, but online, anywhere a user has a computer and an internet connection. Now, um, this is one point that is not on the slide, but I want you to be aware that when there is a war, and a country is trying to control another, one of the first things, one of the first places that are generally attacked are libraries because any colonizer, any colonizer knows that the library will enrich the minds of the people. And this is why any attack on a country generally attacks the library and burns it, which is, of course, a criminal act because a library has resources that help humanity. Now, let's move on to question number five. How will this new digital library improve research in e Egypt? And I am going to discuss with you the first point, which I think is the most important. And the first point says, for a long time, Egyptians have suffered because of a lack of educational and research resources. Researchers needed funding to go to visit libraries around the world. So for example, when I was working on my PhD, I had to go to England and to America to use the libraries there because at the time there were no computers and there was no internet. And of course, these trips cost me a lot of money. Now, the digital library saves the person from going on such long journeys and paying a lot of money in order to um, conduct research. So, in the past, researchers needed funding, needed a lot of money to go to visit libraries around the world, this digital library will solve the problem of the lack of resources and the lack of funding. Now, um, another important point is this research will make global knowledge accessible. So it will make knowledge from all around the world available to Egyptians. Now, the last question is, how will this research improve the lives of the Egyptians? And the first answer is, if Egyptians conduct research in all fields of knowledge, applying the results of the research can lead to the development of the country. So, if research is done in the field of medicine, in the field of engineering, in the fields of uh, finance, in the fields of management, history, geography, literature, the Arabic language and the development of the Arabic language, criticism, all fields of knowledge, all right? Research leads to development as point number six says. One, two, three, four, five. Point number five, research leads to development. Development is the driving force of progress. So research leads to progress. Now, the following point says, to develop in trade, industry, science, technology, management, medicine, 
even to develop in sports and in strategies of sports, specialists have to consult other sources, have to conduct research to fill gaps in human knowledge and to address problems and to solve them. The application of the outcome of research leads to progress and development. Now, I think we have uh, covered all the questions with many possibilities of answers. And so if I were you, I would log in and I would check the Egyptian Knowledge Bank and I would write a paragraph about how the Egyptian Knowledge Bank and the sources you found will help you in your education and in your job. So for example, if you're a lawyer, if you're an agricultural engineer, if you are a journalist, how will the Egyptian Knowledge Bank will be of service to you? I hope this has been a good um, educational experience and I hope you um, can make use of this lecture and write something on your own. Stay safe and stay well.